Hello everyone. I just thought I'd do a video about how to paint watercolour around complicated shapes because it always comes up when we're looking at how to use watercolours. And I've got a really complicated image on my drawing board. I've just spent ages drawing for a commission and so I'm hoping I don't ruin it. And I'm just going to show you how I will get um, a paint to flow around a really complicated shape. Let me just change cameras. Here we go. Here it is. I've got to get the sky on this scene of lots of sails, which has taken a long time to draw, as you can imagine. And there's a lot of complicated shapes there. It's too much to be used masking fluid, but I need a lot of light sails against the blue sky. So let's see if I can do this. I've got a big puddle of blue mixed up. I'm going to keep the sky really simple. And I'm going to turn the page sideways. What I want to do is avoid having too much wet area. because so I want to keep the wet edge flowing all the way through. Got quite a big brush. It's a number eight sable, but it comes to quite a good point. And I'm going to go sideways so that I can keep the smallest area of wet edge. And let's go. So I'm going to go just coax the paint ever so carefully around the edges. So that's my wet edge. And because I'm working on a slope, on fairly good paper, I've got fairly decent amount of working time to just tease that paint right round the shapes. Keep loading it. I'm just keeping putting more on. I can soften that edge as well in a bit. So I've got plenty of time while that bead of water is there, that bead of paint, to just gently persuade the paint to go in and out all those little tiny, teeny gaps without any of it drying or without any brush marks showing. The interior spaces, the internal spaces, I can do separately. It's just this one big continuous space that really gives trouble because with watercolors, you have to leave the white spaces because it's all transparent. So far, so good. This is for a magazine commission. And I really, really don't want to be having to draw it again. It's taken a long time. Quite a fiddly space here around that flag. Keep going. I'm just keep instinctively just chopping up that reservoir of paint there. This wouldn't work if you were painting flat because the paint would just puddle and go back on itself and give all kinds of trouble. Just pulling it down really quick. I can work quickly in the big areas really quickly. It's only when you get to the tiny bits that you need to slow down. I'm worried where I've gone over a little bit. Doesn't matter too much as long as it's reasonably tidy. Here we go, keep on going. I've still got plenty of paint in my palette, so I haven't had to stop and mix it up. Here we go, a bit more. Right up that edge there, nice and clear. The common mistake is to use a brush that's just a bit too small because you see there's tiny gaps coming and you don't want to budge them. But most decent brushes should come to a nice point. And with a light enough touch, I see that's an internal space. I can sort that out in later. I've got plenty of paint mixed up, so it'll all be the same. Let's have a look. Keep going. Nearly there. Should be just enough paint left on the palette. So a few things I can go over. There's a little tiny flag there, which we easily do darker color. That's it. Now what I'm going to do is leave it upside down. 
so that the paint can even itself out while I do the internal shapes. And I'll change down to a number four brush for this. Um, careful not to smudge what I've done. Let's go inside while I've still got plenty of paint left. And while they aren't going to cause a separate area, what's that? That's a space there. Um, any more? There's one there. That's it, I think. A few little ones in there. Now, all I can do with that, leave it to dry, though I might. If this was going in a frame, it wouldn't matter because you'd have um, a mount there. But because this is going on a double page spread in a magazine, I'm just going to soften the edge a bit while it's still wet enough to blend. Here we go. So the text, the text of the page will flow over that edge. Doesn't matter if it's a bit just started to dry there. So you're getting a few cauliflowers, but that won't matter. I can fade it out on oh, Photoshop when it's finished. But that is how I go around really complicated shapes. I've got another one there that I need to do in a minute. I'll do it when it's dry. And I hope that's helped. Bye.